Hello there. Hey, can you do me a quick favor? Sorry, I was, I was what? Can you can you touch my chest? Just just really quick. Okay. Oh shit, it works. There have been some very weird devices over the past few decades related to virtual reality. Today, we're tackling one that I've been extremely excited about, a haptic suit. So buckle up, because this is about to get virtually odd. We all have a basic idea of what a haptic suit is supposed to be. We see it in Ready Player One, I've talked about it a bunch, and it's easy to imagine what it's supposed to do. You wear a thing, something happens in game like you get punched or shot by an enemy, and you feel it. Really, it's just an easy next step for virtual reality as a whole. First we were able to see, then we were able to move, and now we're able to feel. But I have a very real question. I'm all about getting super immersed in games, but what is it with everyone's obsession with wanting to feel getting shot or uppercut? Yeah, because my idea of a good time is to feel every time I get no-scoped and teabagged by a squeaker. Now, of course, being able to feel anything in-game is amazing, but what really piques my interest is to feel this, or one of these, or that. Because if you could replicate those, then a gunshot impact should be easy. And that's why today we're looking at the whole suit from B Haptics. I caught wind that not only were there a handful of games with native support, standalone quest support, but someone actually managed to get the suit working with VRChat. I knew I had to get my hands on it and try it for myself, so here it is. In the box, you get the vest, a Bluetooth dongle, and a charging cord, which is a similar story for the rest of the devices. Here I am using the what Beat Haptics calls Tactacy for the arms and feet, and Tactile for my facial interface. There are hand haptics available, but they're not compatible with the types of games that I'll be playing here. The initial setup was actually pretty easy. You charge your pucks, download the Beat Haptics software, plug in all 50 of your Bluetooth dongles, turn it on, sync, and voila. For me at least, this part worked pretty flawless, which was kind of surprising to me. Getting into game was easy too. There are a few games with native support that work pretty much out of the box. Sayrento was one of my favorites out of this list. I already enjoyed it before, but being able to feel when I was getting shot or hit and feeling headshots made me more immersed in this game than I've ever been. So immersed in fact that uh, <laughs> this happened. There's also a couple demos like this one called Soon Soon VR. It's pretty simple. A cute anime chick pokes you and gives you hugs, and that is until things take a sharp turn. Regardless, I was just happy that this thing worked. The real reason I wanted to test out the haptic suit was for these two games, however, Skyrim VR and VR Chat, more so the latter. But after actually testing Skyrim, I had to include it here. Don't take what I'm about to say lightly, but playing Skyrim in VR with the haptics has to be one of the most incredible moments I have ever experienced, not only in VR, but gaming in general. This is a game that is almost 10 years old, and I've played many, many times. So yeah, I'll admit, I have have nostalgia for it. I fought hundreds of wolves, I've been here on this exact rock before, and I've watched the weather change without even thinking about it. But something special happened. I walked downstream from Riverwood, and as I approached the waterfall, I could feel the energy of the rushing water. My feet and body hummed as I got closer to the water's edge, and quite literally my body was vibrating. Lightly though, just enough to make me stop for a moment and look around. And then it started raining. I literally can't put in words my emotions at the time. Under my feet, I could feel the roaring water, and all over my body, I could feel the raindrops hitting me. This is a game that I've played so many times and added so many wacky mods that nothing phases me in it anymore. I've been there and I've done that, but here I am, standing in my room, with a VR headset on, strapped down with devices all over my body, playing that same game, and I'm absolutely breathless. Not because anything is actually happening, but because I feel more transported to this world that I love than ever before. I'm there, feeling the rain and roaring water. Of course, I'm not actually wet from the rain, and the sensation is technically just vibrations, but more than ever before, I am there. It's the closest I have ever felt to being in a virtual reality. So even though B Haptics lists Skyrim as being a natively supported game, it's really done via a community mod the same way any other Vortex or Nexus mod is applied. Getting it to work was easy, but now it's time to talk about VR chat because that wasn't so much the case. Right away, I'll just cut to the chase and say yes, it does work. Basically anything that collides with the areas you have the haptic suit set up on your avatar will register with the haptics. But getting the whole system to work is a story all in itself. In case you don't know, in VR chat you could use Unity and upload 
upload your own custom avatars. And this is how you mod VRChat to work with the haptic suit without running any sort of client or external game modifying software that could potentially get you banned in game. Well, from the same guy that made multiple VRChat worlds that ironically I have used for my outro for nearly the past year is the same dude that managed to make a Unity package and separate software to get this all working. But uh, there was a problem, as there usually is. Here are the instructions. He doesn't speak English, and the required software was behind a paywall on a website that I similarly didn't understand. But long story short, after lots of Google Translate and help from Behaptics, I did get it working. So what does it actually feel like though? I have lots and lots of time in VR chat. A ton of the culture is hugs or head pats, I mean generally there's just a lot of touching in the game. Some people like that, some people hate it. People have relationships and friendships for years within it. But along with all that comes roleplay. Ah, uh, I, I know what you're thinking, but not just that. Roleplaying in the sense that you're imagining the physical presence of someone when you touch them or are being touched. If I reach over and give a friend a hug, I'm essentially acting. But that's where this gets really cool. For the first time ever in VR for me, if someone reached out their hand and touched me, I felt a response, physically. Of course, it doesn't feel like an actual hand on you, as it's really just vibration, but the point is that people have a real physical presence. One of the weirdest things is when someone walks through you, I could feel them go through my front and leave out the back of my body. It's really just an odd experience, especially for someone that spent a lot of time in VR chat. It does blow my mind though that someone can be in their room in VR and I could be in mine and I could feel our avatars interacting with each other. It doesn't just end there though. Any object that collides with the avatar will set off the haptics. So chairs, walls, the floor, everything. You can interact with this whole virtual world and lay on the floor and I don't know, feel the floor. <laughs> I know what some people out there are thinking. What else can this be used for in VR chat? Well, I guess technically, you can move around the assets in Unity to wherever you want on your avatar and put the haptics on that corresponding part of your body. Have I tested it? No. Will I? Probably not. Is it possible? Sure, I don't see why not, but I had to address this, I know that there's going to be people wondering, and yes, it's certainly possible. So for games that have no native support on the software level, there is support for audio to haptic. Pretty much it converts music or sounds using different equalizers and levels to allow you to feel bass or certain sounds across your body. A really fun usage of this is Beat Saber, it just adds to the experience in a way that pure audio never could. Think of it as a similar feeling to what a sub pack can provide. Other games like Pavlov do work well using this audio to haptic thing, and there are even presets for specific games that you could make yourself. Pavlov, for example, works by highlighting the specific frequencies of, say, a gunshot and taking damage, and maps that to certain intensities of haptic feedback. It's not perfect, and it's not as well implemented as games with native support, but it does work and does improve immersion. I do think it's time to be real here though. If you're expecting to put on the whole suit and magically be able to feel everything accurately as if it's happening in real life, you're going to be extremely disappointed. At the end of the day, the sensation itself is just vibration. It's not a Tesla suit that shocks you or a Neuralink that injects your neurons with stimuli. It's a vest with 40 points of vibes and the arms with 20 each. I do think it's worth looking at the big picture here though. We can dream of hopping into a virtual world where we can do do anything, and the anything that we do matters. Up to this point, the social interactions have been very real, but we're just now getting to a point where the physical interactions are real too. Whether that's feeling the bounce of a cart carrying me to my execution, or just a friend putting a brush on my body, the physical part of the virtual reality is getting closer and closer. This is all pretty beta, and it doesn't even work well with most games I'd want it to, but that doesn't change the fact that it's here. Of course, it's very expensive. For the best alone, it's $500, and if you add every accessory to have the whole suit, you're talking more than $1,000, but that doesn't change the fact that you can buy it, and it's the cheapest way to do it. It's an option, and any consumer that loves VR that much can have your own haptic setup in your own home. It's no longer a fantasy or a thing of sci-fi or just a pipe dream on Ready Player One. And while, yeah, like I said, it's not a replication of real touch, but when you combine the senses of vision, audio, movement, and haptics, even in this rudimentary form, it does make 
for a pretty incredible experience. But who is this for? Am I really recommending a device that is this beta, this expensive, and this limited? Well, first off, this isn't a review. I'm just sharing my experience with the haptics and a device that not many people can get their hands on. Since the beginning of this consumer wave of VR in 2016, I've imagined what it would be like to feel. And this is sort of the first consumer way to do it. Think of it as the DK1 of haptics. This is really for the people that have wanted this since day one and are willing to essentially pay to be beta testers while having the most cutting edge peripherals that are offered. Should any regular VR user sell your kidney to go out and buy this? Probably not, but hey, you do have two of them, I suppose. All in all, feeling in VR for the first time has been a roller coaster ride. From one of the most euphoric feelings I've gotten in a game, to touching someone hundreds of miles away, and of course the disappointment that very few games really work, and you may have to put down a few beers to let your brain make the connection between touch and vibration. But that's what this is all about. Years from now, when we're on version 69 of what haptic suits will eventually be, I think we'll look back and realize is that these early devices were pretty odd. Virtually odd, that is. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Don't miss the Twitch stream today. I'll be wearing the suit on stream for people to have me test various things out. Also, join up in the Discord for updates on that schedule. Thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like Exit and Very Evil Shadow. I literally couldn't be doing any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out. Uh, can I ask a favor just something really quick? Sure. Can you? I know it sounds weird, but can you? Can you touch my chest?